Hey, welcome back to The Dive. Today on the show, we have the president and CEO of Big Gold. Scott Walters is joining us today to talk all things gold and give us an update on Big Gold. But before we bring Scott on, do me one quick favor and just go ahead and smash that subscribe button below me there so we can keep bringing you these videos. Hey, Scott, welcome to The Dive. Hi, Cassandra. Thanks so much for having us today. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, so Scott, as we do with all of our new guests, could you tell us a little bit about your background and what led you to the mining space? Sure, I've been, a, uh, I've been in the mining space pretty much my whole life. Now, when I was a teenager, I worked for Naranda Exploration in Northern Manitoba, Northern BC. Uh, my, my father and grandfather were both uh, underground gold miners in Quebec. So I grew up around the mining industry. Uh, and after university, got into uh, the financial markets and worked for uh, BMO Nesbitt Burns. Uh, and uh, after about uh, 10 years, went out on my own, started financing gold companies. And um, 20 years, 25 years later, I decided to put together Big Gold uh, with a couple of friends during COVID. And uh, we wanted to, uh, in front of what we saw as an escalation in gold prices and appreciation around gold assets, uh, we wanted to uh, get as much land as we could for exploration purposes uh, in an area that was easy to access during any pandemic type situation. So we ideated on Northern Ontario, uh, put together a fantastic technical team, put together about a million dollars in financing and uh, acquired our first 4,000 hectares. And as of today, we're up over 10,000 hectares of uh, really interesting looking exploration uh, properties. Amazing. Okay, so Scott, what do you think geopolitical tensions have done to the mining space? Uh, I think they really highlighted the need for, for having good hard assets as a, as a country and having resources available to underpin uh, currencies and industry. And I think Canada um, is responding well to the geopolitical tensions that we're seeing right now. I, see, I think we're going to see continual appreciation in physical gold. And I hope that the federal and provincial government uh, allows us to, to continue exploration and gives us more financial tools to be more efficient in the use of our capital. But I think, I think we're going to see a lot more mining in the next few months and years ahead. Okay, so shifting gears a bit here, well-known gold advocate Peter Schiff recently said, you'll need gold when the Fed loses this inflation fight. Do you agree with the sentiment? 100%. Yeah, I, I really think we're going to see a return to uh, realization that hard assets are required to underpin currencies, whether they're electronic currencies or traditional uh, Fed directed currencies. Now, according to the latest data released by the World Gold Council, central banks globally added to their net gold holdings for the fifth consecutive month in August. How important yeah. do you think that central banks are in impacting the price of gold? I think it's, it's a great question. And I think if we look dip deeper into what central banks have been acquiring physical gold, it's really been Russia, China and India. And they've been pulling a lot of the bullion out of their vaults in New York and London and various centers around the world. And I think we're going to see a continuation of that. Again, currencies, I, I think currencies are going to be underpinned by some modicum of physical assets. And I think central banks are seeing that. So for investors, global investors, to maintain that liquidity around their currencies and underpin their economies, I think they want to have hard assets like oil and gold underpinning you know, their dollars. Now, what is your outlook for gold for the rest of the year and why should investors buy gold now? Great question. I think, I think we're going to see volatility continue into the end of the year and into 2023. I think we're going to see a lot of volatility in the US dollar and in the VIX and in various major currencies. But I think uh, right now with gold, it looks to be physically suppressed. Um, you know, the, the paper assets are trading really well. If you can get your hands on newsmatics, on coins or physical gold, that's a fantastic real world hedge against any potential uh, financial apocalypse. And for, for less apocalyptic approaches, I think uh, having, having exposure to gold and gold contracts and exploration companies that can generate outsized alpha when gold moves are really nice to have in, in higher risk portfolios for people that are looking for that type of asset allocation. Okay, now let's talk a little bit more about Big Gold. What is the two minute elevator sure. pitch for the company? Sure, so Big Gold is a micro cap company right now. We have about a million dollar market cap. We went public in a very volatile market uh, and we've just begun um, the second stage of our exploration work on our land. We, we started the company with a fairly modest 4,000 hectares 
up near first mining in the Kenora Rainy River Mining Complex. And one of the reasons that we chose that area is as a small company, we don't want to have to rely on spending a lot of money on infrastructure for travel. So we went into an area that has a tremendous amount of infrastructure. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been spent in and around the property for first mining and other mining companies. We have the Cameron Gold Deposit. We have Kenora. We have Sioux River. Uh, right next door so we have a wealth of very experienced and trained people that can help work with us on exploration so we're able to direct our capital in a very efficient way and we're going to maintain a very focused work program on our property we've utilized vtem and tmi we ran about 350 uh, kilometers of uh, airborne uh, last year and that's helped us direct and focus more drilling targets for later on this season we're going to drop about 3,000 meters of drilling over the winter and coming into the spring, we hope to have results that further direct our exploration efforts and more land acquisition. So investors should look for very focused capital spending. Uh, we've got a very small but experienced technical team. Uh, we're major shareholders, the uh, management, myself, we own close to 40% of the capital of the company. Uh, so we, we're very much uh, on the same page as our investors uh, for big gold in our exploration program. Okay, now you mentioned your project is in Ontario. Why do you like Ontario yes. as a mining jurisdiction? Well, there's a lot of reasons. We live in Ontario. Uh, we, a lot of our team live in, in, in northern Toronto and up near the, near the actual property. Uh, Ontario has fantastic tax benefits for, for Canadian exploration expenses. We'll be launching a flow through financing that provides investors with a very tax incentivized uh, way to invest uh, in big gold and participate uh, in the potential upside through exploration. Uh, and infrastructure, we're able to drive to the property. It's a 16 hour drive from Toronto, but it's only a two and a half hour drive from Winnipeg, Manitoba. We're right off the Trans-Canada Highway and all parts of our property are accessible by foot, truck, boat, uh, or uh, you know, uh, helicopter. But most of, the, most of the property can be accessed uh, on uh, logging and uh, mining roads that have been in place uh, now for over a decade. So it's a, it's a wonderful place for us uh, to hunt for gold. Uh, and it's in a it's in an area that has a tremendous amount of active gold mining in it. Uh, so it's uh, it's just a great area for big gold in our team. Now, Scott, there are probably thousands of gold exploration companies out there. What separates big gold in the space? Great question. I think uh, like any company, what separates us from uh, from everybody else is our management team. And we have an incredibly experienced management team uh, on our board and, and uh, uh, surrounding us. We have Bruce Durham, who's got over 40 years of local mining experience under his belt. Uh, he's responsible for four local um, exploration di discoveries, including a lot of work on the Hemlo deposit. Uh, and uh, again, management and the ability to, to have a team working closely uh, with a little with the little amount of expense, the little amount of travel disruption as possible, puts us further ahead of, of teams that are working in more challenging environments with less experienced teams. Okay, so one more thing before we let you go here, Scott. For investors watching the story, what are some of the potential catalysts or key events that investors should be looking out for? For big gold is our work program and the drilling that we're going to be doing over the winter time, and then the desktop analysis of those results, and then that's going to help us direct our capital and our further exploration uh, in the springtime. Those will be major catalysts, as well as the potential for more acquisitions uh, of property. As I mentioned uh, last week, we we acquired another 6,100 uh, hectares of uh, fantastic property uh, on a share cost basis uh, that brings us to over 10,000 hectares. So we've got a great hunting ground and a very prospective and very active gold mining area. Uh, and there should be great news ahead for big gold in investors. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your story with us, Scott. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it and hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thanks so much for tuning in today. We'll be back again tomorrow with the latest news and updates. But in the meantime, I'd love to hear your price predictions for gold for the end of the year. Just let me know in the comments below. We'll see you tomorrow and goodbye.